today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys all about how to mount cameras to cars. Whether you're going from basic to pro, we've got all the mounts, we've got all the cameras, and I'm gonna show you guys step by step. Also, I'm gonna put down below here a timeline, so if you're a beginner, you might wanna start over here. If you're looking for an intermediate, we're gonna be using the Move Max gimbal and the Osmo Pocket 3 in the middle, and then later on, I'm gonna show you how I mount my professional cameras which is a little bit more work, but really worth the shot. And to sweeten it all up, I've got an amazing car coming for our shoot today. So let's go. So as you can see behind me, we have an incredibly specced Porsche GT3 Touring Edition, an oak green metallic. This thing is gorgeous. So we're starting with our basic setup. Now this is really gonna be if you're shooting with GoPros, Insta360s, maybe your phone if you can find a smart mount or you maybe have the Osmo Pocket 3. You're gonna start maybe with a cheaper mount. Now one of my favorite go-to mounts is the Delkin Fat Gecko. This is a really well-built system. This is the two suction mount. It also comes in a three suction mount if you wanna do something more heavy duty. I'd recommend these highly. Now, no matter what suction cup you're using, whether it's the basic level or the pro level, I highly recommend bringing on your shoots a nice cloth and some waterless wash. I just got this from Walmart, but I'm sure you can get it anywhere, and a nice rag. Make sure that you clean off whatever surface you're mounting your suction cup to, and also make sure you clean that suction cup. It's really important to make sure that you get that strong adhesion to whatever surface you're using. Also, lastly, make sure to check with the owner if you're mounting it on their car, because they might have PPF, and depending on the level of strength you get from your suction cup, it can actually damage that PPF. So just be aware of that as well. So the easy way to do this, you press it on, press the button, and then lock it in. Press the button, lock it in. Now what I do, and I highly recommend, give this thing a good yank. Make sure that you're not gonna lose your camera. And these things lock in pretty tight, so then you can figure out where your camera's gonna mount. So this is the simplest and most basic way to mount your GoPro or something simple and basic. So try this out. For this first method, we're not really focusing too much on camera settings or proper exposure. Just set up your camera as best as you can in auto settings. Maybe set your exposure to minus one so that you're not overexposing your highlights and this will get you set up for a really good start. If you guys are looking for some suggestions on where to mount your cameras, I made a video up here on how to mount my GoPros, so you can go check that out with a bunch of different angles. Now let's hop in to the second method. For our second setup, we are using the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, which I'm sure you guys have seen all over the internet. This thing is all the craze right now, and it's for good reason. This thing pumps out really decent quality, is very easy to set up, get professional looking video, and there's some really great features on this for automotive videographers that make getting these rolling shots really, really easy. This will work well on the Delkin as well, but for this section, we're actually gonna upgrade our car mount to the Move Max Blade. This is the Move Max Blade, and what it allows us to do is it actually takes out a lot of the bumps on the road. So my car actually is lowered, and so the suspension is a little bit more stiff. But as you can see in a lot of this video, the roads aren't perfect, and they're never going to be. So unless you use something like this, you're going to get a little bit of bump and shake in your footage. Now, the Osmo Pocket 3 does a pretty decent job on its own, just being fully honest. But this really does take it to the next level, and I've really enjoyed using this. And because we're using a lighter weight camera, we don't have to worry too much about the suction because it's not holding too much weight. And so in my experience, it's held perfectly fine with no issues. For the construction and the build, I thought it would be more expensive, but it's not. I'll leave a link down below. Unfortunately, I can't get you guys a discount off it, but I do get a little bit of kickback if you use the link down below. Now, when it comes to getting the best settings out of your Osmo Pocket 3, I've also made a video on this over here, so you guys can go see how to set up your Osmo Pocket 3. But one of the biggest ways that you're going to get that really nice footage is by using ND filters. To get proper exposure on this, we actually have to use an ND filter. This is from Freewell. This I think is one of the best packs you can get, but it's also one of the most expensive you can get. 
I've also used the KNF filters. I'll link both down below. They all work and work pretty well. Some have pros and cons, but we're gonna throw the Freewell ones on now and just make sure we have correct exposure. Now, another part of the beauty of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is that I can use the MIMO app, so I can actually sit in the passenger seat and we can actively track this car just by clicking and dragging, and now we are tracking that car. Now, maybe you can see in the footage here, but while we were shooting, a ton of smoke from the fires in BC rolled in. So that's why you can't see the sky because it was covered in smoke. And in fact, you can even see some ash in the footage here. Obviously incredibly sad what is happening in BC with the fires, but for today's footage, it made it look kind of cool. As the dystopian mood was really starting to set in, I wanted to capture a grandiose view of Calgary and the rear taillights of the Porsche GT3 Touring. Now, this place is beautiful, but the security there is very tight. Incredibly kind to people, but they really don't let you get content there. So I just snuck out, grabbed this shot that I absolutely love and really captured the mood of the day. And then we mounted our camera on the back of the car before we got out of there. So the third and final way to mount it is obviously the most difficult and strenuous. You're mounting your full frame DSLR or some kind of proper camera on the back, the side, the front, and you can only get one shot in this configuration, but you will get the highest quality footage. So I have my camera set on here. We're gonna set all of our settings, but we're gonna set our ISO to auto. So if we get varying lighting conditions, this way the camera will auto compensate for those lighting conditions. And if you like the way that this footage looks, then I have good news for you guys because I've created a finishing LUT pack for your videos, whether you're shooting on iPhone, GoPro, you're using log footage with your Sonys, your Canons, or your Lumix. These are sweet finishing LUTs that give you incredible final looks and makes all your footage look linear across the whole entire thing. I've put a ton of work into these. If you've been watching my YouTube for the last year or two, these are the LUTs that I have been using on every video. And if you're asking me, I think it looks pretty darn good on this footage. You can see all the different looks and moods. Now, because we had a bit of a dystopian kind of vibe, the desaturated LUT actually looks incredible on this footage. Or if you want to go more for that dark night, make it look like Gotham, well, you can use the dark night LUT. I absolutely love how these turned out and I hope that you guys enjoy using them as well. I'll leave a link down below. You can use them in Premiere, Final Cut, Cap Cut on your phone, wherever you can use Cube LUTs. Now this is the iFootage car mounting system. To me, this is my absolute go-to. It is the most expensive system, but I'm sure you can find something similar to it in the market. Why I absolutely love these is these are huge suction cups so they can actually grip to some different contours of vehicles and it's very well built with all metal quality. You can tell they put a lot of thought into the design of these because of how you can take these clamps off. You can mount these little grippy things to your camera and then adjust this and then lock it back in. It's a very well thought out system. These metal arms have teeth on them as well, so you know that you're getting a really, really locked down system. I would say if you can mount two or three of these to your rig, you're gonna have a really solid setup. And if you're gonna do this, I highly recommend putting a cage on your camera. This way you can get multiple mounting points on your camera so that you get it super sturdy. If your camera has in-body image stabilization, I highly recommend turning this on because you're gonna to start to feel and see in your footage all the shake from the car. If you have that as an option, definitely turn it on. It's gonna save your footage. Now, for the sake of this video, we just mounted it in the one location on the back, but this way you can see the different quality that you can get from using your actual full frame DSLR. You can move this system all around the car to get different shots. It takes the most time, but is definitely going to be the most cinematic footage. One thing I highly recommend, always prioritize safety, both for yourself, the other driver, and your cameras, of course. Make sure that you check and double check that those suctions are on tight. Make sure that you have a way of communicating with the driver. In this video, I was using walkie-talkies, or you can obviously just call them on your cell phone as well. So now that you've seen all the different ways that you can mount your cameras to cars, well, I hope that this has been educational for you. Hopefully one of these ways will meet you where you are at in your videography journey. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I love bringing and you guys along for my shoots and teaching you everything I know. You might like that video there. And if you guys are interested, go check out my LUT pack. I've also got presets for Lightroom down there. Appreciate you guys so much and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Peace.